Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. Happy Thursday. I hope you guys are doing good today. So it is a lot going on out here in these damn streets, but we're going to go ahead and talk about it. So one of the topics I want to hit on today is if you guys don't know, there's been a huge uptick in robberies and not just any robberies, but people literally going uh, where the money resides, where the money resides, where the money resides. Folks ain't out here robbing people in the hood no more. They're not pulling up on, you know, people making twenty thousand dollars a year. They are now going to luxury areas. They are going to high-end celebrity houses. They're going to reality TV star houses. They are even going to influencer houses. And they are robbing people blind. And it is getting scary out here. If you guys do not know Marlo Hampton from The Real Housewives of Atlanta, she was robbed the other day. Very terrifying. And so we were talking about this on Instagram. And a lot of people were bringing up the point about Marlo and others constantly showing off their wealth. And one of the things that Marlo said in her interview is that, you know, ladies, be careful. We need to stop showing off our luxury items, which I found very interesting because I have been saying this for years. I want you guys to go ahead and watch these videos of some of these top celebrities, influencers, reality TV stars, athletes. I mean, many of the women from The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and other franchises have been robbed. Influencer Nikki Tutorial was robbed at gunpoint. It wasn't even a month ago that ex-basketball player Vince Carter, he was robbed. And he was jacked of $100,000 from his home. Back in 2017, ASAP Rocky was robbed. And they stole a million dollars worth of jewelry and electronics from his home. So it is getting a lot worse out here. So even recently, two house sitters who were there doing their job... Um, they were house seating a home in Sherman Oaks. It was a mansion in L.A. in Sherman Oaks. And basically they were zip tied and robbed during a home invasion. So the influencer's name is um, Florence Mursky. And she's also the baby's mother of Scott Storch. And Scott Storch was like a super huge producer back in the day. He definitely has money, honey. And so people know that that's her baby's father. Plus she's an influencer and she likes to kind of show off her wealth on social media and so this is what happened to two of her house sitters. This was in January this year. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys all of these news clips. And I'm going to come back and just give y'all my opinion and my thoughts on this whole situation. So y'all go ahead and check this out. Well, Michaela, I just got off the phone with the homeowner, the person that police believe was actually targeted in this. She's a well-known businesswoman. She's the mother of a toddler that she shares with a very well-known music producer who's worked with the likes of Dr. Dre, uh, Justin Timberlake, and Beyonce. And she shared these screen grabs with me from her ring doorbell. Take a look. There you see her terrified two housekeepers, and you can make out their hands are zip tied. They actually use the house's ring doorbell to communicate with her. She is out of state, thousands of miles away. And it was through that ring doorbell, they were able to tell her what had happened to them. Now, the home invasion happened around 1.30 this morning. The two victims are housekeepers saying they were sound asleep when they were woken up by three masked men. The suspects pointing guns at the women, including a handgun and a rifle. The women told me that the men order them to the floor where they were bound, their hands tied with those plastic zip ties. The suspects then went on to ransack the multi-million dollar house, again home to this businesswoman and social media influencer. She is again out of town. Now the housekeepers estimate the suspects spent at least 20 minutes inside the house and after they left, taking the housekeeper's cell phones with them, they came outside for help. They told me they were too scared to scream and their hands were still bound. So they started hitting that 
ring doorbell over and over again. It activated the app on the homeowner's phone, and through that doorbell, they managed to tell her thousands of miles away what had happened. Now, bringing it back here live, the homeowner tells me she's absolutely horrified at what happened. She is so grateful that her housekeepers are all right and that she was not home with her toddler son. She will be working with police, and right now the working theory is she was targeted. This house was targeted. This was not a random home invasion. The three men were masked, so no suspect description just yet. Michaela? Quick thinking on behalf of those uh, two housekeepers, but look, the ring doorbell likely captured some footage of them as well, the, the suspects, no? Actually, the ring doorbell, and that's a really interesting point because the homeowner told me there is a shadowy figure and the, they put some tape over the ring doorbell. And another interesting point, police told me there is no visible signs of forced entry. The homeowner believes that they actually brought someone who picked a lock and that's how they were able to get into the house. Goodness me. All right, uh, Gigi, this is quite a situation. Thanks for bringing us the latest information on it. New details tonight after someone broke into Vince Carter's Atlanta home on Father's Day. We just got the police report, which shows officers found about $16,000 in cash outside the former Atlanta Hawk star's home. Whew, Carter told police that is just a portion of the $100,000 in cash missing from his house. On Sunday, Carter's wife called 911 and hid in a closet with her son when she heard loud noises near the front of the house. Can you imagine? And when officers arrived, they found a masked man running away from the home. He got away in an SUV. We have breaking news at 11. Real Housewives robbers caught on camera. It was a terrifying night for a star of the hit show as armed bandits stole thousands of dollars in valuables. Tonight, the LAPD releasing crystal clear new surveillance video that could help bring them to justice. Eyewitness News reporter Leanne Suter live for us in Encino with that late breaking new information. Leanne. Mark, that's right. That surveillance video truly is crystal clear. All three suspects caught on camera. Cops certainly hoping it will be the break they need in the case. The brazen home invasion robbery of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Dorit Kemsley captured on camera. Police hoping the pictures will lead them to the suspects. I need to know something, Camille. The 45-year-old reality star was home during the terrifying crime October 27th. Police say the gunman threatened to kill her. She pleaded for her life, her children asleep in their rooms. In the video, the two suspects are seen calmly walking up to the large Encino home. It appears they discussed their plans at the back door before breaking in. Investigators say they made off with expensive handbags and luggage like this, as well as jewelry and watches. Kemsley has more than 1 million followers on Instagram, the reality star often sharing images of her wealth and extravagant lifestyle. Love it. This video shows the star in her driveway behind the wheel of a high-end sports car. The suspect stash in the robbery so large they dragged it out in a sheet, hauling it over the bushes to the street. Kemsley isn't the only real housewife who has been targeted. Every single piece of jewelry or handbag you see on mm. this season is gone. In 2018, Kyle Richards, another star on the long-running show, was robbed of more than a million dollars worth of jewelry and other valuables when thieves broke into her Encino mansion. The LAPD hoping this clear video of Kemsley's robberies will be the key to cracking the case. One of the two suspects seen wearing a distinctive pair of fancy shoes in addition to the black hoodies and dark pants. A third suspect also seen leaving the home and then backing up the getaway vehicle, a black four-door pickup, the trio disappearing into the night. Of course, if you recognize any of those suspects or that getaway vehicle, you are urged to call the LAPD. Please, I have little babies. Please, I'm a mother. Please, I beg of you. My kids need me. Please. please. It was very disturbing for her to relive watching the robbery on the show because she's been working in therapy. I mean, I don't want to speak for her, but I, I know that she's been working with a therapist and all of a sudden have people talking about it again. Even if you're not watching the news, if you're on Instagram, you're scrolling, you're seeing the clips, and it just brings back all the memories of all the stuff that she's been working on to try to get over. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's like, usually it's about a fight or an argument, which is already hard enough, but when you go through something right, really traumatic, like Tariq and PK did, um, to have to relive it, on the show and then again at the reunion it's going to be a very long road for recovery involves for many crimes and ongoing investigation and high 
profile victims. One of them, Marlo Hampton of Real Housewives of Atlanta fame, who told me she watched on her security system as armed, masked men kicked her door down, making a loud boom. When I heard the boom, when I heard my nephew scream, and I knew that scream was a scream of fear, my heart dropped. Real Housewives of Atlanta star Marlo Hampton says she's a real crime victim. After the attempted burglary of her Sandy Springs home July 1st, that police have now told her is tied to other incidents. She said she went to a panic room, called 911. The suspects who kicked her door and fled, possibly because she yelled. Sandy Springs police were there quickly, and she thanks God. Just thank God that we're covered in the blood of Jesus, and I'm here to share this story with you. But my main concern is I want all the the ladies i want everyone to be aware if you are posting items if you do have luxury items be careful don't you move a sandy springs police Just sergeant says police took down Stay four alleged though. members of the gang sunday morning my car broke down down the road i'm sorry i never did okay. As they attempted a home invasion at a townhouse occupied by the mother of one of the children of the world-famous rapper Future. But it was a deep investigation into the gang's past that led Sandy Springs investigators to stake out her home knowing she might be a target. All right, you guys, you guys just saw all of those news clips. And like I said, most recently, it was Marlo and even Gunner's house has been targeted while he's been in jail. So this is very frightening. And this is why I've been saying from day one. I don't believe in flex culture. I don't find anything cute about it. I don't find the purpose of it besides people who need to get validation from strangers online. You know, I grew up in an era where even if you had money, you didn't brag about your wealth because, again, people had to deal with each other face to face. So you didn't necessarily wear your wealth. You know what I'm saying? You weren't really out there showing off amongst just, you know, the regular smuggler people. You might wear your fine jewelry, you know, high-end clothes to a specific party, you know, specific event. But you're not walking around town dripped down from head to toe because, you know, if you're doing that in the middle of the Bronx, you're going to get robbed. But for some reason with social media has now allowed people to flex and they're thinking that they're just flexing for social media, but they don't understand that you are technically flexing for the entire world. So what is flex culture, you might ask? For y'all who don't know, flex culture is basically tied into social media culture. And flex culture is essentially showing off an abundance, honey, okay, of your wealth via social media. Meaning that you're doing luxury hauls, you're posting pictures of luxury goods, you're showing off and vlogging from, you know, beautiful locations, um, private islands, from Dubai, you know, maybe you're in Paris, you're basically showing off and flexing this lifestyle that you have to make your followers, you know, quote unquote, feel away. Lil Tay out here balling in the eye gate. I dropped 200 racks on this car and I'm only nine years old. I got the keys to this car. See this? These are butterfly wings. Y'all haven't seen this car in your lives. I've been driving this around the Beverly Hills area and I'm only nine years old. I ain't got no license, but I ain't ever gonna get no license. Lil Tay just got verified. Y'all all said I wouldn't make it, but bitch, look, I'm verified now. Lil Tay, the youngest fuck of the century. Bitch, I just got verified. Mm. Oh, damn, what the hell? This Lil Tay, let me tell y'all something. This shit costs more to your rent. My toilet costs more to your rent. Everything in my bathroom costs more to your rent. And see, this is my closet. Everything here would be designer. Gucci, Louis, Versace. And also, when I was six years old, I lived in Atlanta, and I was broke as hell. But one day I woke up, I said to myself, I ain't gonna be broke no more. So I got up and I started working hard, moving bricks, and now we be living in the hills. See that view? Y'all don't have that view. And I be holding your mama's rent. This bed cost me a Lamborghini, and I work hard. So if y'all work hard, y'all can accomplish your dreams just like I did. So you're doing all this, you're showing off to your followers, you're showing off your expensive lifestyle, and you know, and you're sharing all of this. Some people are even sitting there with money phones and, you know, throwing up cash and laying on cash and just doing anything to get clicks and views on social media, to get hearts and likes and, you know, get comments of people saying, oh my gosh, that's so awesome. I want to be like you when I grow up. Oh, my life is terrible. I'm a fry cook. If only I could do what you did to get to where you're at I would quit this job and floss too so it's a lot of crazy things that come with flex culture and you know let's keep it real society is definitely built on a class system right 
Nobody would tune in to watch the Real Housewives of Compton if all these women are poor, you know what I'm saying, or at a lower, you know, social economic level. Nobody would tune in to watch the Real Housewives of the Bronx or the Real Housewives of North Minneapolis or the Real Housewives of Newark and New Jersey, right? Nobody wants to watch poor people struggle and go to work every day and pay bills and live in their little houses. That's not interesting. People love to watch what they're not able to obtain at the moment. People love to watch wealth. Hi. Hi there, sir. Sorry for interrupting you. Your house is probably the most beautiful I've ever seen. Oh, thank you. What do you do for a living? I am an investment. Okay, thank you so much. Hi there. Sorry for interrupting you. Your house is just so beautiful and I really wanted to know, what do you do for a living? I own a food factory in Iran. Wow. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Hey. Hi there. Sorry for interrupting you. Your house is super cool and I just really wanted to know, what do you do for a living? I'm a technology executive. Okay, thank you so much. That's awesome. What do you do for a living? I'm a cardiovascular technologist. Wow, okay, that's an interesting job. Thank you so much. And as much as people complain about wealth being thrown in our faces, we tune into these shows. We watch shows like The Real Housewives of Insert Whatever City Here, and we oogle at their wealth like, oh my gosh, she's, you know, Balenciaga down from head to toe. Look at this. $20,000 dress. Oh my God. Look at her Hermes bag. And, you know, look at the jewelry. And these women show off and, you know, they show off for us, the audience as well. But we watch all this and we play into all this. And this is why you now have an abundance of this whole fake it till you make it. If you notice when a lot of these women get onto these reality TV shows, they're not living that trife life. A lot of them are faking it till you make it. When you see them their first season on any of these shows, their clothes are basically basic, their wigs are basic, their makeup is basic, because they really can't afford all of that stuff. But as the seasons go on, oh, my God, they keep a stylist. Look at Drew's wigs. Her wigs used to look like shit two seasons ago. Now they're whipped. Her makeup used to be bad. Now her makeup is flawless. So even, like, her clothing is more high-end compared to when she first got there. And that's all of them. Remember, Kenny was living in that apartment, struggling. She had the bad skin, you know, and so she got a dermatologist, you know, her makeup game on point. Ooh, ah, the ghetto. Ooh, not a white refrigerator. Girl, please put your shoes on. Let's go find you a home, honey. Ooh. And you can just see how much she's elevated. Now she has a beautiful home and everything else. She by Sheree for a long time. It was just a bunch of dirt in the ground. And then eventually she was able to build her mansion and get her clothing line. So as the money starts coming in, these women are better able to more floss and secure that lifestyle that they were faking it to make it. Now they're not really faking it. Now they've quote unquote made it. But the problem is this. What they have done is basically not just, you know, the Real Housewives of Atlanta, but just reality television influencers in general. It started a whole culture of faking it till you make it. Where now the average teenager online, you know what I'm saying, they feel like they have to floss. They have to be dripped down in supreme and, you know, all this high-end stuff in order for them to get followers, in order for people to like them and things like that. And the problem is you end up getting trapped in a hamster wheel of lies and trying to keep up with the Joneses. You really can't afford that lifestyle, but you find yourself going to high-end stores to buy an item, take a picture in it for the gram, and then return it. Or have your friend take a picture of you with all these bags in your hands, but those bags are empty. The only thing in there are maybe some shoes or an old t-shirt, but you're making it look like you just went on this major shopping spree. So you have a lot of people faking it. That's why I say everything on the gram that glitters is not gold, and the gram is only a highlight reel of people's lives. Now, this would be fine and dandy if all of this energy just stayed on social media, right? If it just stayed on the gram. But what we are seeing now is that the chickens are coming home to roost. Flex culture has now created a situation where it's killing people. 
not only mentally, not only spiritually, but physically. Because now the wolves are coming to pay y'all visits. And now people are seeing like, damn, maybe I shouldn't be sitting here on social media showing off wads of cash, showing off all these bags, showing off all my luxury goods. Maybe I don't need to do a house tour, okay, where people are seeing every single layout of your home. People ask me when I built my house, you should do a house tour. Absolutely not. The people who want to come to my house are people that I know. I would never invite the entire internet to know all the intricacies of my home. No. You know, and some people are mad about that. And I don't give a damn. I don't owe anybody a tour of my home. For people to just constantly just share every intimate moment, everything in their lives, it's starting to cost people. There have been people killed, robbed at gunpoint, and, you know, been through hell and back because of this social media flossing. And the sad thing is I can't count the number of times where I've seen influencers when they want to be vulnerable and they say things like, I'm really not happy. You know, I went and spent $4,000 on this bag, but my problems were still there. I'm still lonely. I feel like, you know, people are following me, but they don't really know me. They don't really get me. They don't really support me. They don't really care about me. I've seen influencers put together an event who've had millions of followers. I'm talking about millions, honey, way more than I can ever dream of having. And literally they put on events and maybe 50 people have shown. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Why is that? Because again, you're so busy flexing and, and flossing for people. The ones that you're attracting with that, they don't really care about you. They're watching to be nosy. They're watching with envy. And then the rest of them are watching to eventually, you know, hit a lick on your ass. A lot of these people are not even genuine fans. How do you have a, a, a debut of anything and no one shows up? That's insane to me. But that's why for me, it's always been about building my fan base with genuine people who genuinely love what I do. Not because of what I have, what I've obtained. People who come here to get edified. Not because of what I'm showing off. That's never been my thing. So I, I never get bothered when people say stupid things like, oh, you don't know how to dress. You don't really wear high end stuff. Your style is boring. My style is safe. I have high end shit. I don't need to show it off on the gram. I don't need to show it off to anybody. Who, who do I need validation for? When I buy something, when I buy something luxury, guess why I do my unboxing in my closet? And I spin around like a little girl, like, oh, my God, this is so cute. And I set my item down and I go back to living my life. I don't need y'all to watch me unbox anything. What does that do for me or you? And especially in this economy right now where folks are struggling, I'm not watching nobody's unboxing shit. I'm not watching nobody talk about high end stuff when I'm going to the grocery store and I see that the potatoes are getting less and less. The lettuce is not as fresh as it was two weeks ago. Supplies are not coming in. So y'all really shouldn't be out here flexing anything when in the real world, people are really struggling and the wolves are coming out. You know what I'm saying? So people have to be smart. You have to move smart. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't show off anything or you can't, you know, buy yourself things or be proud of your accomplishments. That is not what I'm saying. It's one thing to be like, oh my God, I finally saved with the money. I got these designer shoes, check them out. Cool. Congratulations. I love to see it. But when most of your feed is you flexing every other post or your entire post is about your luxurious lifestyle. You're inviting people who are not genuinely happy for you and who want to take that from you. So you got to remember that while you'll have fans watching, while you'll have some people who genuinely love you and support you, you're also inviting the folks who don't have no connection to you, who don't give a fuck about you. All they're doing is looking around the background to see where your location is at to see where they can come and stick you up. Remember, the same thing happened to Pop Smoke. You know, so we have to be very, very mindful of what we post on social media. Because again, like I tell y'all, it's so many different dimensions to this internet shit. And some of the people who are watching y'all are not necessarily humans with good intentions. A lot of demonic shit going on in these social media streets. And sometimes you can invite demons to your door. So y'all better wake up. Y'all be thinking I just be saying this shit just to be saying it. I've been the same way from day one. You know what I'm saying? And I've been saying this from day one.
I don't agree with flex culture. I don't see the point of making strangers jealous. I don't see the point of needing validation from strangers to that point. Why I need to post something expensive every day of my life. That is insane to me. And I think Marlo's starting to see that now. Because you notice that message? Ladies, you know, we might want to be careful posting our luxury items. Don't nobody talk more about luxury or post luxury items more than Marlo Hampton. It's about the pieces and the items that are in your closet. Every woman has to have a skin in her closet. This is my Big Apple Red Chanel Croc, my Hermes Croc, this orange Birkin here. And I get it. You know, she grew up in foster care. You know, she was poor most of her life. And then she's come up and she's proud of her come up. You know, her items are gorgeous. Her clothing is gorgeous. She knows how to carry herself. So I get it. But at what point do we slow down and understand that you want to attract people who love you for you? And not because of what you wear or what you own or who you're associated with. When you start building relationships on that level, one, you'll find a lot more happiness and you'll find that a lot more genuine people come to you as opposed to you basing friendships and connections and relationships with people based on their influence, their follower numbers, what they wear, what they own. Because at that point, it's just a bunch of vapid people getting together for social media clout. It's not even because it's a genuine connection. We're just all here because we're all influencers. How do you become a part of Shanghai's super rich social class? Some people think joining a WeChat group is the way to go. There is a group of female socialites in China who have an extremely luxurious life, or at least they appear to. They wear different designer clothes every day, live in a variety of five-star hotels, and enjoy luxurious afternoon tea. A blogger recently exposed their secrets after covertly joining this mysterious group. An article entitled, I lurked in Shanghai's socialites group for half a month and became a socialite observer. What he discovered was that instead of being an actual group for rich girls talking about their latest luxury product, the group is actually all about finding ways to simply appear rich. Part of being part of the group is sharing resources and splitting the cost of renting luxury products and even sharing intimate items like secondhand Gucci pantyhose. In one example, group members would split the price of a two-person room at the Bulgari Hotel in Shanghai with up to 40 people. And then you have to ask yourself, well, even with the word influencer, what exactly are they influencing? What are they influencing you to do? Are they influencing you to be your best self, to better yourself, to better your situation? Or every time you see them and you go on their page, you end up feeling worse about yourself. Are they influencing you to be better or influencing you to do dirt to get to where they're at to get the luxury items that they're flossing and throwing in your face? So y'all got to watch that word influencer because everybody who's an influencer is not necessarily influencing you to be a better version of yourself. Okay, I think I've said a lot in this video. So on that note, y'all, I'm out. Y'all have a good day. I will talk to y'all later. Leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. What do y'all think about all these upticks in robberies, especially concerning social media influencers, reality TV show people? What do you guys think about the uptick of robberies going on now in these high-end locations, especially in cities like Atlanta and L.A.? Like I said, these goons is out here lurking. The wolves are out. The economy's bad. So I really don't think people should really be flexing in this day and age. And on that note, I'm out. Y'all have a good day. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.